Welcome to the Out of Fab Lab, and today we are going to look at the Epilogue Legend 36 EXT laser cutter and uh, how to use it at the Out of Fab Lab. So let's get to it. So you can see it on this side here. This is it. So first and most important thing is to take care of the ventilation or the fume extraction. And in order to do that, there are two switches that you should take care of. So one is this, you should turn it clockwise to the maximum position. The other important part is this switch. You should make sure that it's on the on position or up. Then the next thing is to locate the on button of the laser, which you can find on the side here. So this one. And when you switch it to the on position, so the display of the laser is going to go on. And you should wait until it initializes, it, until it finishes initializing. So next thing is to actually set up the material. And in order to do that, you should open the laser lid. So we have some material here already. So this is a three millimeter plywood uh, in the size of 600 by 300 millimeters. So I use here a little bit of tape to make sure that it's flat against the surface. But anyway, we are just going to use this area here. So which is flat, uh, so we shouldn't be worried too much. Um, one thing that we need to do now is to set the origin. Uh, so it's where, so where the uh, zero cross point of x and y axis is going to be uh, on the laser coordinate system and in order to do that we need to close the laser lid go to the control panel and hit the pointer button in order to activate the red laser uh, so if you look carefully you'll see that somewhere there is a little red laser dot and next thing, in order to move that laser dot around, we need to disable the XY stepper motors uh, in order to be able to move the, the laser beam around. Uh, so we hit XY off and we confirm with the green button and then we can open the laser lid again and we can move these parts and that part over here around. And you see that the red dot moves along with the the movement and we should set it so that the red dot is somewhere five millimeters from the top and five millimeters from the left side of these bars over here and when it's done then we can close the laser lid again like so and we can hit set home and in order to make sure that the laser actually registered the origin point we should set reset and now I will hit, hit reset and if the origin point doesn't move, that means that the laser managed to capture the origin point and it is acceptable to it. And if you ever forget how it's done, then um, so there's on the laser lid itself, there's a little sticker which uh, has all the necessary steps. So that are needed in order to set the origin. We are going to use Adobe Illustrator to prepare uh, our file. Um, so here I have a square um, uh, with, with some fill inside. So if I hit Control Y, then I can see the vector, uh, the vector outlines of this object. And if I hit Control Y, then I am toggling back to the rendered view of the object. So this is how it would look like in print. Uh, but in Illustrator it is important to make sure that the document is in RGB color mode. In order to, make, to do that, you should click on File, go to Document Color Mode and click on RGB Color. So now we are on RGB Color. Then you should select the object separately and make sure that for the lines that you want to cut, uh, the line color is set to pure black. So which are, which is uh, six zeros in hex notation. And the same goes for the fills. Uh, for the fills, if you want to engrave things, um, so the default engraving color, uh, the default fill color is also black or six zeros uh, hex. And yeah, once again, for the, for the line that you want to cut, make sure that the thickness of the line is 0.01 millimeters. 
also, so we are working in millimeters. So when you go to document setup, make sure that all the units are in millimeters as well. And so this object is going to be, uh, so if I go to transform, you can check the width and height of it. So it's four centimeters in width and four centimeters in height. And the object in the middle that we are going to engrave is 20 uh, millimeters by 20 millimeters in this. In order to cut and engrave, um, so the general recommendation is actually to separate the engraving job from, from the cutting job. So it will make it easier for you to recognize the both jobs if you save two separate Illustrator files. So I'm going to save this first one as, um, so I'm going to go to desktop, make a new folder example. And we'll save this as engraving. Okay. And then I'm going to go to File and Print and select the Fab Lab 1000 print preset. Uh, here, uh, it, there's an interesting setting we just called Ignore Artboards. If it's checked as it is now, uh, then Illustrator is going to perceive the cutting area starting from, from the objects uh, that are on the canvas. But if you leave this unchecked, then it's going to take into account the canvas as well. So and it's going to place the origin where, where the origin of the canvas is. So, but I recommend to leave this on because it's going to help you to save uh, material. Next thing is to go to setup and to check whether the epilogue engraver device is selected. And then you would click preferences and here you get access to the laser driver. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, so it's a smart idea to actually specify the raster and vector uh, jobs separately. So there's also an option for the combined uh, version. So when you can do both of those in one job, but here at the lab for some reason, sometimes uh, there are mishaps regarding that. Uh, so it's better to separate into two separate jobs. So let's select raster and the thing that becomes active is uh, this raster setting part. So we need to specify speed and power. So in order to specify those, we can open the laser cutter settings on the desktop or you should be able to see them also on the wiki.alto.fi page if you go to the Auto Fab Lab space over there. So you'll find a document, um, a page uh, that is called laser cutter settings and uh, all the values should be there. So consider these as a good starting point. Um, so if you, you should first um, do some test cuts uh, before you do the real cut on a bigger sheet of material or a fresh sheet of material uh, because the lens might be dirty, the mirrors might be a bit off. So you should always take, you shouldn't take this for granted as, as the final um, best uh, setting. So you should experiment, expect that it's going to be off <laughs> by a few numbers sometimes. So but for, for um, engraving, it doesn't matter that much, but still. Um, so let's go to the material that we are using, which is the three millimeter plywood. And as we see, the recommended setting for that is 90 for speed and 50 for power. So let's set it to 90 here and 50 to power. Also, uh, take into account uh, the DPI setting. So if you are using lower, so these values in the text file, these are uh, tested with 600 DPI. Uh, or dots per inch, but if you go, if you set up a uh, lower resolution, then that means that you are, you will get faster engraving speeds, but then probably you will also need to adjust the speed and power so that, so that it matches the, uh, the DPI setting. So generally the power used should be a bit more and the speed should go down 
but that's also a thing that you can experiment with when you come to the Fab Lab and start engraving and cutting your own materials, your own things. So yeah, let's leave it to 90 and 50 for now. Hit OK. And then hit print once and then print the second time to close the print dialog. And you should see the job uh, on the laser display as job one now after sending after clicking the print the second print button and at this point we are ready to move back to illustrator and set up the cutting job yeah so we use we do not change anything in the design but we are going to go to file save as and save it as cutting So, and then we are going to open the print settings again. So it should still be on FabLab 1000 with ignore artboards checked. Let's hit setup. Let's check the epilogue engraver and then preferences. And this time let's select vector option. And now these three parameters become active. So it's not just the speed and power this time, but it's also the frequency. And let's check what are the cutting settings for the three millimeter plywood. So it's 28, 75, 500. 28 for the speed, 75 for the power, and 500 for the frequency. So let's set it up. 28, 75, 500. So vector sorting on, that's fine. Autofocus is nice to have if you are cutting uh, from a flat material. But if you have um, a ready shape that you would like to engrave and uh, you never know where the uh, focus probe is going to hit the material and whether the focus is going to be measured precisely. So you can do also manual focusing, but then if you want to do that, just ask us. Let's hit OK, then print again and print once more. You should see the second job on the panel over here. So as you see, job two, cutting AI. Um, and then by using these buttons over here, so you see there, there are arrows here, so arrow buttons. If you use the down arrow, then you can go back on, in the list. So you can go back to job one. And then if you hit up, then you go back to job two. And uh, what do we want? We want to actually start with the engraving job. So now we have loaded the jobs onto the laser cutter and we can work with the laser cutter alone. Uh, so let's select the, let's run the first job. So yeah, in order to select the job, you need to use the arrow buttons and then hit green, the green go button. And once we hit the green go button, the laser is going to start to focus operation, but let's see how it goes. So green button. So auto focus in progress. And engraving. So next, we go to job two, uh, which is going to cut and hit the green go button to launch it. So again, autofocus in progress. And done. So just need to wait for um, a few seconds till the fumes get extracted and then we can hit reset so that the laser returns to its initial position and also remember that once you when you're working with the laser just stay close to it always because it's the main cause for labs burning down in other places so we don't want our lab to burn down, so always stay close to the laser. And now we can open the lid. We can use a 
smaller tool like this in order to check whether we actually cut through and we can remove the material. And it seems that yes. And that's the result. All right, thanks for watching. And there are going to be tutorials for other machines at the Alto Fab Lab very soon.